Hey, what's up? It's Bond, and today I'm going to be talking about Xbox. Specifically, we're going to talk about the business update they just did, uh, the little podcast that we got to watch, and uh, what they said, what I think of it, and how I think things are going to move forward. If you like games, if you like Xbox news, and so on and so forth, please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button on this video, and comment down below with how you are feeling. All the podcasts I do, the streams and everything, please consider becoming a YouTube member. Okay, let's jump into it. So today we had the big podcast. It was only about 22 minutes. Uh, this was the business update. Um, they keep saying this was meant to happen later in the month or even uh, further out than that. Uh, but due to all the leaks and rumors that, to say the least, caught some steam last week, they moved it up and they decided to give us you know, the gist of what is going on now. Um, so to jump right into what they said, um, they said that there are four games coming from Xbox going to other platforms. They didn't specify. I'm assuming it's going to be Switch and PlayStation. They didn't confirm the games, uh, but they did say that the titles, I believe, are over a year old um, or are live service games. Um, they confirmed, Phil did, that it is not Starfield or Indiana Jones, which is good. Um, beyond that, uh, they basically just said this is kind of an experiment. If it goes well, they may do it more with similar type games kind of the second tier games i guess is one way you could describe it um and uh, the other part of it is that uh they you know they really reiterated that things like game pass uh were not going to other platforms they really reiterated that they weren't changing their strategy uh for exclusives and for day one game pass on games and stuff like that so to, to quell a lot of those fears, all the people who've been fear mongering over the last week and a half or so of all the Xbox games are going to other platforms. Why buy an Xbox? All that, you know, have been unfounded, basically. Um, it's kind of funny how a lot of people need to be eating crow right now. Um, the people who spread these leaks around uh, and revealed them, as well as all the influencers who went really, really hard and um, basically stirring everyone up into a froth. Uh, the the Tim Dog is one of these people who, um, if you check out his Twitter, he is not backing down, even though um, he pretty much got made to look a bit of a fool. Um, you know, I knew this would happen. I, I had a feeling that most of these influencers who have been losing their minds for the last week and a half, when faced with the truth of the situation, weren't going to gracefully be like, okay, maybe I overreacted. They're just doubling down, and that's fine. Now, they did talk a bit about hardware. Um, they basically said that there is some new hardware coming for this holiday. My guess is that's going to be a discless uh, Series X, as well as maybe that haptic uh, controller that got leaked during the ABK leaks. Um, they also confirmed future hardware, which coincides with that 2026 rumor we've been hearing. Um, they didn't say anything about handheld, uh, but they, uh, Sarah Bond did come out and just say that they, they're you know playing on this next hardware to be the biggest leap in, uh, in console hardware ever. Um, we'll see. That sounds like marketing speak. Sony literally said the same thing a couple days ago, uh, and so we'll have to see uh, who's right. More than likely, depending on how you measure it, they both will be. So um, the only other things was uh, kind of a commitment to things like cross-play, um, backwards... Um, backwards compatibility and things like that. Um, they, they seem to really be trying to reiterate that like, Hey, our base plans basically aren't changing. We're just going to dabble a little bit. Um, I've seen some people push back and be like, well, you know, th they're going to do more than those four games. Uh, the four games are rumored to be sea of thieves grounded for the two live service games. And then potentially, um, Hi-Fi Rush and Pentiment as the games that are over a year old. Um, there, there was, there's been a lot of talk about how, oh, well, they aren't going to stop there. And that's probably true. If those games do okay on other platforms, they're probably going to do more. I think that 
without saying it, they made it pretty clear that they aren't going to be putting Halo, Gears, Forza, and so on onto other platforms. I think that would be really dumb. I would say that in the future, any live service or like second tier game from Activision Blizzard King or even Bethesda Zenimax is going to have a pretty solid chance of going to other platforms. But one of the big things they talked about a lot was how that was only going to happen when those games were basically showing no usefulness as an exclusive. So, uh, you know, it's that thing where people probably didn't buy consoles for Hi-Fi Rush, but it was a really, really good game. I'm sure the sales on it have probably plateaued at this point. Uh, its influence on Game Pass has probably plateaued. So now they're going to put it on the other platforms and make back more money on that investment. That calculus will probably never work for the big first party games, especially the, uh, you know, the games like Halo and so on. And so I, I just, I'm fairly confident that most of those concerns people had about the best Xbox games ending up on other platforms and why would you buy an Xbox or a PC if you could just buy a PlayStation and have it all? Well, if you want any of those premier titles from Xbox, you're going to need an Xbox or a PC and that doesn't seem like it's changing anytime soon. So it's kind of wild how out of hand things got. I you know, don't really know what else to say about it. Those people aren't going to back down. They're just going to double down. Your best bet is to just ignore them. Any of those people that participated in all the outright, all, all the outrage, all the sensationalism, you just have to let it go. And don't think for a second that, you know, the journalists are over it either. You can tell a lot of them wanted this to be much more dramatic and crazy, even to the point where there were a bunch of them freaking out about the four games not being named. Well, it's almost certain that, especially due to this early reveal of this, they probably have marketing deals with Sony and Nintendo where they can't reveal the names yet. Uh, it's pretty, they, they, they made it as obvious as they could what games they'll be. Um, I suspect there's going to be a Nintendo Direct or some kind of official announcement from those other platforms. Um, but the way that I saw a bunch of journalists especially trying to be like, oh, well, this is how, why wouldn't they reveal it? Even though they know, like they know those things. If I know that marketing deals exist and that this smelled of that, then they do too. Like it's, it was really weird and, um, and very like, it felt very performative for these journalists who I know know how these things go and yet they still kind of were playing the whole like oh how how could they not tell us like you know exactly why and they will um but you know that's how it goes so um i overall i have i feel fine about this i don't you know really care there's a good chance they try these four games out they barely sell it all and they never do this again i hope that's not what happens really i want those studios and those games to you know, get more looks and play time and money um, to, so that they can keep making things. Um, but I, I think people need to remember the example I made before. There was supposed to be a streaming box. It even showed up behind Phil in one of his videos and then it got scrapped and it's not happening. Just because things are discussed, just because they try things out, just because they consider things doesn't mean they're going to happen. It's the tech world, it's the tech industry, especially with the biggest company in the world, or at least one of them. You know, things happen, they try things out. Um, the last thing I'll talk about is we should expect this stuff from Xbox, and we should expect that the other platforms may follow suit at least a little bit. The advantage, if there is one, of being in third place like Xbox is, while also being profitable, while also being a successful company in its own right, um, and being backed up by one of the biggest companies in the world, is that they can experiment. You know, Sega couldn't do that. You know, all those comparisons. That company was failing. Xbox isn't failing. It's just not number one. Um, and that puts them in a unique position to try stuff out. And I think that's what they're doing. And I'm okay with that. Um, I... I'm waiting with bated breath about this next uh, set of hardware, both whatever's coming this year and whatever is coming likely in a couple of years. And uh, that's that's where we're going to go with that. So there you go. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you like this video and you want more like it, hit the subscribe button and hit that like button so more people see it. 
I am Bon Diesel all over the internet, including over on Twitch, where I do stream a few times a week. You can also catch my two podcasts here or on any podcast platforms. They're called The Bonfire, which is a weekly gaming news podcast, and The Mass Effect Hypecast, which is all about the next Mass Effect game. That's all I have for this one. So until next time.